most importantly, you guys stick together. Um, you know, we, we can't splinter in adverse times. Uh, that, that's our challenge when things get tough, uh, finding a way to stay the course. Um, obviously, uh, you know, you're down six at halftime, and then the third quarter, there's just an avalanche. You know, they started off 12 to four. Um, we gave up 44 points in a quarter. They shot 66 from the field. They made seven threes. They got to the foul line 12 times, all in the third quarter. We fouled three jump shooters in the third quarter. Uh, we had four turnovers for five points in the third quarter. Um, I, the thing that jumps out to me after two games is our inability to sustain playing at a high level against this team. Uh, and, and they they do. They just stay the course. They come at you, they come at you, they come at you, and we have uh, been able, not been able to withstand that. Um, so I just want to make sure as we get on this plane tonight to go home, uh, that we get on that plane together, knowing that we have a chance to get our first win at home uh, in a few days. And that's our whole focus. Amid that, amid that 44 point third quarter, uh, cameras showed DeMarcus and Will going at it a little bit and jawing at each other. Is that just frustration boiling over, or what was that? Yeah, that's all it is. I mean, without getting into any details, um, no one wants to get embarrassed. No one wants to get their ass kicked, you know, on national TV. Um, you know, that's two games in a row where you're in the game, then snap the finger, you're out of the game. And it's, it just seems like it happens that quickly, Mike. Uh, and so I think it's just frustration. You know, I mean, uh, uh, DeMarcus, Will, you know, our whole team, we all have a close team, so we just got to iron those things out. Like I said, just find a way to stay together, no matter what's going on, good or bad, find a way to stay the course, stay together, because that's the only chance, only chance we have to be competitive in this series. Uh, if we're fragmented, if we're breaking off uh, into groups, we're individuals, uh, then uh, it's, we, we have zero chance of winning a game in this series. Coach, you mentioned the third quarter, but to end the half, I think it was a 26 to seven run. And it feels yeah. like when they have runs, they have really big runs where you, you guys have periods where you don't score or you score very little. How do you limit their runs a little bit better and stop them from snowballing in those moments? Yeah, well, great point, obviously. It was a 26 to eight, I believe, to close that half. And I told the guys at halftime, in light of that, we're down six points. It's a two possession game. Really lucky, right, to, to that kind of a run. But then we coupled the 26 to eight with a 12 to two, I think, to start. So it's a 38 to 10 run. I mean, you're not going to beat anybody, you know. Um, so how do we, how do we kind of? Because there's been two games in a row where there've been big, big runs by them. So what is the DNA of a run? The DNA for us is turnovers slash poor shot selection. That fuels another team's break. They get going in transition. Uh, they had 20 plus transition points tonight. Um, so, and then defensively, breakdowns, fouling jump shooters. Again, to foul three three-point jump shooters in one quarter is just uh, undisciplined, is, is the best word I could use. Um, and then breakdowns within the game plan. Um, I almost feel, Katie, that we have to play as close to perfect as possible to avoid those runs and to give ourselves a chance. And obviously, as we've seen in game one and two, that is hard to do for 48 minutes. We looked really good in the first half in stretches. In game one, we looked really good in stretches. And uh, we're just not able to sustain it right now. And going home united and finding a way to sustain our effort and our play is our biggest challenge in front of us. Hey, Michael, the, the DeMarcus Will thing, the technical <laughs> fouls tonight, is that just disappointing to see because you do have such a veteran team who's, who's been in the playoffs, who's been in these situations? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I told Nicola, I said, as frustrated as you are with the referees, and, and I I feel his frustration, you know, I really do. Um, I think he's getting fouled, like he thinks he's getting fouled. He's not getting the call, but he has to find a way to play through that. Um, you know, he's way too valuable, way too important for our team to be in the locker room watching the end of a game. And also, as a leader of this team, he's got to show guys in adverse times when things aren't going your way, you got to find a way to fight through it be mentally tough, and that, that's going to be a challenge for him moving forward. Um, and same thing with Will DeMarcus. It's, for me, I know it's coming from a good place and sometimes how you handle those situations, but uh, we just have to find a way to be uh, just more mentally tough and more poised. When things went aw awry tonight, we lost our composure, we lost our poise. Michael, they've Mike. had a lot of success with their small ball lineup, obviously, and I think I'm sure a lot of that starts defensively for you but when they're in that lineup 
do you feel like you guys are doing a good enough job of, of getting the ball inside to, to maybe stymie that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, Nicola was 9 for 20 tonight, you know, and, uh, you know, when they go small, it's Draymond on him. And, you know, um, I, I don't know, Nicola went to the foul line eight times. I'm not sure how many were in the first half compared to the second half. But, um, you know, Draymond's a guy that's won defensive player of the year before. He's guarding him very well. And so we're trying to move him around, getting him in different spots where he can try to score against that one-on-one -on -one coverage. Uh, and then when we go to DeMarcus off the bench, trying to get him in the, the post as well against some smaller guys. So, yeah, I think it is definitely a, uh, a point of emphasis, but I'm sure we can do a better job of it as well. Michael over here, uh, Ron Karczyk from the San Francisco Chronicle. That lineup, following up that question, that Warriors lineup, when they have Poole, Thompson, and Curry together at the same time, has sparked these two runs, game one and game two. How, what unique challenges does that present? It seemed like today it wasn't mostly three-point shooting. It was creating driving lanes and, and space for them. Well, the challenge is you have three guys that are capable of putting up 30, 40 points. I mean, Jordan Poole um, had 30 points in game one. He had 29 tonight. Uh, Steph Curry is the greatest sixth man ever in the playoffs. You know, to, to bring a guy off the bench like that, 34 points, five threes, uh, and then Clay Thompson. You know what I mean? So you have three players that can get it on their own, and they do such a great job of passing, cutting, moving, and making plays for each other. They, you know, I learned back in the day, CYO basketball, St. Agnes, you, the, the most dangerous guy on the floor is the guy that just passed the ball. And Steph Curry is the embodiment of that, and he's been doing it for years. He gives the ball up, you relax, and he's flying off another screen, and he makes you pay. And Jordan Poole, his understudy, has, uh, has, has paid attention, done his homework, and is playing the same way. So those three on the floor with a Wiggins and a Draymond Green is, uh, is very, very, very effective. Michael, you, uh, you talked about sensing uh, Nikola's frustration, knowing Jokic the way you do, what do you expect from him uh, in come game three? And also, you talked about this team not splintering. Does Jokic have to be the leader that kind of keeps everybody together? Uh, I think, you know, uh, in terms of staying together, that's on everybody in that locker room. You know, I mean, uh, it's, it's, uh, that's being together is not on one person. You know, uh, that's a responsibility that every one of us have. So I, I think that's a team wide uh, effort, and knowing Nikola the way I do. Um, I'm hoping that when we go home, knowing our team the way I do, that we go home and we find a way to fight for 48 minutes and not 24. You know, we, we put up a good fight in the first half, two games in a row. Unfortunately, Ohm, this is a 48-minute game. Against that team, you got to play 48 minutes, and we have not done that yet. And, uh, and that's my greatest challenge as we approach game three is to somehow, someway, find a group that's willing to fight and compete for 48 minutes. Thank you. Thank you.